When I was a young man in academia, one of the first things I had to do to prove myself was design my very own experiment in E prime. Now this wasn't very easy because the documentation, I couldn't really understand it, it was really hard to get through all that. Any question I posted to the E prime website, it took them forever to get back to it. And anything I posted to a supposedly helpful Google Groups forum usually just made me feel like I was a worthless idiot who had the IQ of cornbread. Does this sound familiar? Because it happens to a lot of people. And nobody really wants to feel that way. Nobody wants to feel like uh, they don't understand what's going on. They don't want to feel stupid. And so what this series of tutorials is going to do is going to get you off your feet if you're a beginner to E-Prime. Now there's some really hardcore programmers who hate E-Prime with the passion of a thousand burning suns. And I can understand why. E-Prime can be very frustrating sometimes. And some people might say, why not use PsychoPy? Why not use presentation? In the future, we'll get there. But for now, E-Prime, since it's so ubiquitous, and since people who don't have a strong programming background can more easily approach it, I figured this would be a good place to start. And even for veterans who've been using E-Prime for a while, you may learn a few new tricks. So hold on to your dongles and let's get started. I'm assuming that you know jack squat about E-Prime. So once you open up E-Prime, here's what it looks like. And you have no idea what's going on, do you? Just admit it. It's okay. What you'll see first is a list of things called E-Objects over here. They're colorful, they have these little animations on them, and they look kind of friendly. We'll get to those later. Over here is what's called a structure view. Now this, if you think about it going linearly in time as you go down, is what happens to the subject when they see the stimuli being presented on the screen. What we're first going to do is we're going to just click around on stuff. Just click. Why not? Double click on experiment object. And notice there's a bunch of different stuff in there. There's general, there's notes, there's startup info, devices, what all these things mean. Doesn't matter if you don't understand it right now. Just click on stuff, double click on more stuff, and get a sense of how this thing is all set up. What you'll notice is that anything that we click and drag or create over here in the structure view, you can double click on and something will happen, which is cool. This is the first step on the road to understanding. Now back to these e-objects. What are they? An object, simply stated, is an object, which means it has things like attributes. It has things like methods, which are things it can do. For example, a jar of Nutella is an object. It has the following attributes or qualities. It's brown, it's jar-shaped, and it's nutritious and delicious. Once we're sufficiently evolved as a species, we may create a jar of Nutella that can open itself on its own, which would be very useful for people like me. That would be a method. That's something that the jar of Nutella can do. All right? So all these objects, they have different attributes. They have things that you can explore, their qualities about the object that you can call upon or there are methods that you can call upon to make it do stuff. So let's take one of the simplest objects that they have available, which is text display. And the first thing we're going to do with E-Prime is click on this and drag it over here. Now text display 1 is the default name for it. If I clicked another one over here, you get text display 2 and so on. Now if I want more formative names, just like you would do in, say, one of the icons on a desktop, in Windows, you can double click it very softly and then call it something else like My Text Display. If you don't want something anymore, first delete it and notice that it's in unreferenced E objects. Now, there's some times where you want something unreferenced, but we're not going to get into it right now. What you can do is just double click it again and delete it. Once you do it, it's gone forever. So sad. Okay, now this My Text Display. You don't have to be a programmer or have much experience to know that probably whatever we type into this thing is going to be what's displayed once we run the experiment. So I can type in whatever I type in here will be displayed. Whoops. Displayed. Look at me go. Now just like before when I was saying just double click on stuff, notice there's another really helpful thing to click on, which is this properties pages. This disembodied hand touching a piece of paper or something. First thing you'll notice is this general tab. Okay, so notice these properties, which are attributes about the 
object, or they contain attributes about the object, has a bunch of different stuff in here. There's things like, how do we want to align it? How do we want to align the vertical, the horizontal? Where do we want this text displayed? And how do we want it portrayed? So for example, the fore color is simply the color of the text, and the back color is the color of the slide behind it. Also, do I want the back to be opaque, or do I want it to be transparent? So these are all things you just mess around with. For example, I might want red text on a navy background. You can either click and select something from these options right here, or you could just type it in. You could type in a new option like blue, but I like navy, so let's do that. Frame is also very important. You can do things like make it take up the entire width of the display screen that gets booted up. You can make it slightly off-center by using percentages. Or you can simply give it things like center or left or right, whatever you have. So all these things should make intuitive sense as you click them. And if you need more options, just click on the drop-down menu right here. So once we hit apply, it'll apply all the things that we changed right there. Is that all you need for an experiment? Well, actually, yeah, if this is the most bare bones experiment you want to do. If you want to run this, click on the running purple guy up here. <laughs> yeah, life is weird. And then type in a name for your experiment. So I'll just type, uh, it's one of those days, my experiment, and then hit save. For right now, when it says enter subject number, hit zero. And then session number will press one. Okay, we're gonna continue with all of that. And notice that text is only on for say a second and it's crammed all the way to the left. That's because we mess with stuff on this properties pages, as you saw before, where we had the exposition in the left. If I change that, hit apply, click the running dude again, enter the same stuff as before, notice that now it's going to be centered. Well, that's really cool, isn't it? Nothing crashed, nobody died, and in general, that's a good thing. But what if we want something more out of these objects? Well, there's more stuff we can mess around with. Click on duration slash input, and notice that, indeed, that thing was only up for about a second. And duration here is specified in milliseconds. So I can make this thing up on the screen for however long I want. I can make it up for 10 seconds. But let's just make it 3,000 milliseconds or 3 seconds. Run it again and see what happens. Any guesses? probably going to be up there for three, two, one, and then it's going to exit out. Simple enough, right? Let's mess around with just a couple more things to get the hang of what's going on. Under duration input, another thing I could do is make the duration infinite. In other words, it's going to be up forever until something happens. What's that thing that want to happen? Well, usually in an experiment, you want something like a button response. You want something that the subject does so that you can log it or have it go to another screen, possibly telling them they made an error or a correct response. So I'm going to click Add and then click on Keyboard. What we have here are different allowable responses. In other words, responses which will get some sort of reaction out of this object. Either it will advance a slide or it will log something as correct or incorrect, or maybe even both. So notice in braces right now, it has any, which means just press any key and you'll get some sort of response to it. You could also just type in random letters, like ASDF and so on, or numbers. And what this means is that all of these numbers are allowable to make this slide continue. And the end action, what those button presses will do, right now the default is terminate, which means exit the slide and go on to the next thing in the structure, whatever that is. So for right now, Let's give it something like the space bar. It's pretty common. What you'll need is you'll notice that there are special reserved keywords and space bar is one of them. So in curly braces, put in all caps, space for the space bar. All we've done now is said, hey, leave this object on for as long as possible until the end of time, unless somebody hits the space bar and only the space bar. And if that happens, terminate the slide and move on to the next thing. If there's nothing else after that, exit the experiment. Okay, let's do it again. Subject zero, session one. And notice this is gonna be on forever. Forever, ever? Forever, ever. Until I hit, you guessed it, space bar. And now it's done. Seems simple, right? 
well, actually we've covered some very essential things about E-Prime and objects, which is common to any programming language. You'll come across them if you haven't heard of them already. Objects, like we said, have had attributes, qualities that you can call upon, change, and methods, or things that happen, things that the object actually does. Okay, and you find those under the Properties tab. So later, what we'll cover is how to create a more complex experiment and cover more attributes and methods of these objects. You can release your dongles now.